Se non conoscete il mondo degli yacht, ma ne siete incuriositi. If you don't know a lot about the yachting world, but are intrigued by it, stay to watch this video because I'm about to introduce to you a special type of boat. It's the Magellano 66, built by Asimo. A big yard and a large boat, 20 meters. Azimut is a world leader, and Magellano is a range of shuttles that represents that. Those who would choose a modern trawler like this know that this style will suit them for years to come. In short, it is a yacht with a timeless feel. In the same series, there are also the 43, 53 and 76 feet models. Observe the sides, that is, the sides of the hull. They are very high and they show how they can protect the deck from the waves. You can move about safely on board, partly because the combings are high and over the gunwale there is still the handrail, even on the bow, so there is no problem if you lose your balance. The aft cockpit is safe because even here the sides are high. The fly ends exactly on the vertical of the sofa and thus covers all of the living area. Aft of the mast there is the solarium. You can furnish it as little as you want and towards the bow a cooking area with a grill, the dining area, the sun and of course the helm. Also in the bow there is a sitting area, very nice because it is not visible from the dock and with this there are three external living areas. At the beginning of this video I invited you to have a look at this yacht because of its large hull. It gives room for internal volumes greater than those of many other similar sized boats. Entering the salon you have the feeling of being in touch with the outside and if the boat is located in a natural paradise it is worth it to have this whole glass area. The large L-shaped sofa is in front of another sofa. In the living area there is a table for six people. The kitchen is located towards the bow, next to the helm. And to divide the working area and the relaxation space, as mega yachts do, you can add a separation panel. The only mistake that you should not make on these boats, at least if they are not intended for rental, is to reduce the size of the cabin. To be consistent with the philosophy of this type, the owner couple must be able to stay on board the best. That's why they designed a suite with a full beam, filled with natural light and with considerable stowage space. There is a large wardrobe dedicated to the owner, a second closet for him, a chest of drawers, the vanity area and even a storage under the bed. The bathroom is obviously comfortable and classy. If you buy a Magellano 66, you want to impress your guests. Don't be afraid, look at the size of the VIP cabin. It's a boat for long cruises, so there is plenty of storage, even for your guests. The third cabin is a double with closet and private bath. The fourth cabin has bunk beds and could be destined to the boys. Azimut, however, also uses it as an office. Questa imbarcazione è diversa da tutte le altre, soprattutto in navigazione. The vessel is different from all others, especially in navigation. It does not pretend to run fast, but to navigate always, well and comfortably, and the hull was designed for just this purpose. It has a straight vertical pendant to better cope with the waves. Con queste linee d'acqua La carena è... With these water lines, the hull is longer than traditional boats with those long bow lines. And if it is longer, then it is more stable and more efficient. Today we put it to the test because there are waves that are long and rather high. Now you must not think that because it goes slowly that it is slow. No, because it is also faster than the planing boats and I'll explain why. 
If you get a sports boat, you often need to stop to refuel or to allow the captain and crew who are tired of riding the waves to rest. This, however, does not even need to stop sailing, so you do more miles, you reach more distant destinations and see more places. Not bad, right? The Magellano 66 is 20 metres and 15 centimetres long and has a displacement that varies from 37.5 to 44.5 tonnes, depending on if it is completely empty or at full load. Now, more or less, we have an intermediate situation. The hull is propelled by Volvo Penta D13 engines with 800 horsepower each. Propulsion is in V-drive with shaft line. In displacement, consumption is very low. For example, 10 knots are consuming 40 litres an hour, which means that to travel one mile it takes four litres of fuel. But if you have patience and reduce the speed a little, for example, if we drop to 8 knots, it takes 20 litres per hour, that is 2.5 litres per mile. It's a low power to move about 40 tonnes over the water. Now, as the reservoir of this yacht has a 4,500 litre capacity, it means that at this pace we could take in the beauty of 1,800 miles non-stop, equivalent to the tour of Italy, including circumnavigation of the major islands. We are sailing in front of the port of Varese and I bring us into high seas. The swell is growing because it is a long wave on a dead sea which comes from afar and has a lot of strength a lot of force. This hull expresses the best of itself when in displacement and when planing. Well, since we have a total of 1,600 horsepower, let's give some gas and use it all. The ascent is very gentle, it is progressive, and this is part of that comfort that makes us feel good, even here on the fly, even in rough sea conditions. With the engine at 1,750 RPM, we are 16 knots and this is an excellent cruising speed. Obviously, consumption increased. We are using about 140 litres an hour total. Now let's take it to 2,000 RPM. The maximum speed can be considered cruise for the D13 Volvo Penta and the speed rises. 18 and a half, 18.8, 19 knots. To complete the trial, we must push it to the maximum, against the wind, the waves, and see not only what it does, but also how fast it reaches its stability. The GPS marks 24 knots. I was not expecting it to go so high with this type of boat. The credit is to the hull that Azimut has dubbed dual mode, that is, with the dual mode of operation. Yes, because depending on the speed using the different parts of the hull, it relies on different sections to optimise its own efficiency, depending on the speed. I've turned back to cross over the wake I've just made and it's very soft. It's really fantastic. And then when a yacht so big turns so quickly and the angle of skidding is mild, even minimal, only a few degrees, you really feel at ease, even up on the upper deck. So, what do you think of this yacht? Have you decided what you will do when you win the lottery? Will you choose a fast boat or a slower shuttle? Which could go quite fast anyway. Well, maybe it will be something else that influences your choice. But I'm sure you'll think of this Mejolano 66 by Azimut.